Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, we have today with us a very fun guest. He happens to be a professional juggler. <laughs> Yay! And I saw him uh, Saturday, and I was really impressed. It's so mo it was so much fun. Um, so I appreciate you being here, Chris. Yeah, thank you for having me. Especially on such short notice. Um, and um, maybe I'm going to introduce yourself to find out who you are, mm -hmm. um, what you have been doing up to now, and how you got into this. So a lot of questions, but let's start to know. So you professionally a juggler, and how long did it take you to get to that level? So becoming a professional juggler is kind of easy. You just declare yourself as, I want to be the, doing this to make money. Like that's kind of all you have but to do. But it took you 18 but years of practice. <laughs> for, for me personally, I've been practicing for like almost 15 years. Yeah, that's and what I mean. That's I mean, a lot I of practice. I have a lot of different props like we have on the table. I do different stuff like balls and diabolos, contact juggling. That's some awesome. Other kind of unique stuff. Yeah. And I mean, to get really good at that, usually it takes like at least an hour a day oh, of practice wow. probably. And then and you juggle with a group also? Yeah, here and there, I juggle with groups and friends, and I do like um, festivals, and I travel around, and all no, sorts of stuff. No, because there's a juggling group in San Francisco that meet by the... Yeah, they meet at the circus school, I think. That's one group. And then there's another group that meets in Dolores Park on Sundays, actually. Oh, yeah, I saw those. So they, those they had an anniversary those are, last week. Those are weekend. a lot of fun, too. Yeah. And then there's a the Kizar Stadium. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of choices for you to practice, right? Yeah, a lot of meetups in the Bay Area. Yeah. Def definitely a lot of meetups. So which group do you like better? Um, since I'm South Bay, I usually go to the South Bay meetups. Oh, okay. But I go to like Oakland. There's like a place called Flow Toys in Oakland. They have like a lot of light up props that okay. I usually go there too. There's a lot of my friends over there. Oh, okay. And all, all over the Bay, really. It's just so, so basically when it lights up, it's a different kind of juggling? Um, they basically have like juggling balls that, light, that like have lights in, in the them. In the dark? Or they have these that light up. Okay. Do, you, do these be... Uh, yeah, these can light up and also... They can? I do, I do have fire versions of these as well. Oh, so wow. You can, there's like a little wick in the middle and you could um, put the AO on fire. <laughs> wow, that's so much fun. So you chose a wonderful profession because it's always entertaining people. Yeah, yeah. I definitely like it a lot. It's pretty nice to see smiles on kids' faces or go around and just brighten people's days. Just yeah. kind of out of the ordinary, just... I get to practice with stuff that I love to do, then I get to take it, like, to And it parties. helps you focus, too. Yeah, right? juggling, juggling actually has a lot of benefits. Um, there's a scientific study, I forget the exact name of the study, but um, they were studying how juggling affects gray matter in your brain. Oh, yeah. And gray matter, which basically is, like, how you, how fast Think. you can reflex and respond to different things. Um, and you, you, it you actually increases gray matter a lot in your brain. Oh, so, wow. Uh, I think it was a study at Stanford, possibly. Makes you more intelligent. Yeah, so quicker reflexes, more and quicker to think about things in general. Kind of makes sense because you're throwing things in the air. Yes, you have to think yes, about yes, it. and you got to keep attention on the words mm -hmm. are going to fall, so you have to be quick. Yeah, so maybe less clumsy. Like if you drop something, sometimes I randomly catch like a spoon oh, wow. and I accidentally drop it off the table or something. I was oh. like, oh, I didn't even think about that. It just happened. <laughs> so I mean, oh. it's kind of fun. Wow, so like you that. started in high school or something? Yeah, yeah. So how I got into juggling. Um, I very, the very first time I got into juggling was actually a um, neighbor when I was maybe like eight or nine. He was juggling three tennis balls. Wow. And I was like, oh, it, that's cool. That's really, yeah, like, he's is. really good. Yeah. And I, I wanted to get into it, so I practiced. And I got it maybe like in like a few days, just kind of just you practicing in my room up, over at my least bed. Like with two balls, like maybe. Two or three. Yeah. Two or three. You and then I kind of put it away until high school. And then and you started again. When I went to high school, actually, I had a professional. He's a, he is actually a teacher, but he is like also a professional juggler too, which is pretty awesome. So and after you school, get to he would initiate it. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, he was um, he was known as uh, his name is Matt Hall, oh. and he's a pretty famous juggler actually. He does a lot of different props, and he teaches Japanese at the schools, usually oh, like a high school he's level. He's still a uh, juggler now. Yeah, he's still a juggler. He's actually organizing a festival in Palo Alto in February. Ooh, that's so awesome! I'll help that's him so with that, awesome. and then perform and teach at the festival. <laughs> wow. But like, he used to travel around the world. He would go to Japan and go to New Zealand and other festivals. He'd invite it as a special guest. So that was a big influence on me. Definitely a big influence. It Did really you travel? 
Not when I was that young, but I've been starting to recently. <laughs> oh, you have? Yeah, yeah. This year I went to Europe and I went to um, Iceland and Mexico and Ooh. Poland and... That's a perk of being uh, yeah, a juggler. Yeah, it's, it's pretty fun. You get to travel new places. And the good thing about juggling to the community, like, you always have friends wherever you go. So, oh, like, wow. wherever... You, I knew people in Germany, I knew people in Poland, Mexico. It's not like I went there and you I... You like, made friends around the world. I made friends or I knew friends already on, like, Facebook and just That's juggling groups and stuff like that, so. Wow. It's a really fun profession, and there's a lot of people in it that are, like, really friendly. Like, they'll be like, oh, yeah, you can sleep on my floor. You don't have to pay for the hotel or anything. Oh, how and cool. And it's pretty cool. nice. It's so much, uh, not only fun, but it gets you involved with your audience a little bit. Mm -hmm. And you, last time I saw you perform, it was mostly a young adult uh, audience, dancers. Yeah, kind of, like, around my age, we were, like, 20s yeah. or so. But sometimes you perform mm -hmm. for kids, you said? Yeah, so I do kids' birthday parties, and I also started teaching at middle schools. So I would go to middle school to middle school, and I would teach kids how to do a bolo, which is wow. Chinese dough. So, like, they would have a PE class, and I would have, like, about 60 or 80 of them. And they practice. Videos to use, and I first teach them, and then I give them time to practice, and then I do a small show after. Oh, wow. And I did one on... So it's part of PE? Yeah. Physical yeah. education? So I just go to middle school to middle school, and it's, like, all around the Bay Area, sometimes a little further. Um, I did one actually this Monday. I went to one in San Jose, and there was about, throughout the whole day, I probably taught about a thousand kids how to juggle. Wow. So it, it was a pretty busy day. <laughs> but wow. all the kids really enjoy it. They, you can see their faces it's light so up. So it must be a big school for a thousand? Yeah, yeah. It was a pretty, a pretty big school. <laughs> Unless it was two or three schools together. Um, it was one school, and each class had at least 150 to 200 kids, probably wow. sometimes even like 200, like 20 or more. Wow. So it, it was a pretty, pretty big, big, big audience, huh? Yeah. Wow. And the school in that case is the employer. Um, so I'm actually working in collaboration with another juggling company oh, okay. known as Jester Games. And they yeah. reach out to middle schools and they also provide me like the gear to use. And basically I already have the skills to perform and teach. So it's like awesome. I go to schools for them and then. Congratulations that <laughs> on getting that. Yeah. Because it's hard, it's a <laughs> profession where it's hard to get gigs all the time. Yeah, as an artist, it's really hard to get gigs and survive off of it, especially in the San Francisco area, it's just so expensive. Yeah, 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 San yeah. Francisco is, uh, you and gotta have two jobs sometimes. Yeah, and uh, I actually um, worked in the tech industry for f about five or six years before actually trying to do this full-time profession. Really? So I... So you, ca you also have the option yeah, I have the option to do that on the side or something. Kind of right now what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to do this full time and also make my own video games on the side. Oh, yeah, yeah, so that's a good idea. Kind of helps me to fund my own stuff. and yeah. So I don't have to work for somebody like a 9 to 5 job or sometimes for the gaming industry like 9 to midnight or something. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> because if you develop a game, mm -hmm. then the sale of the game will, will kinda just feed goes off you. For kinda, itself yeah, yeah. yeah. but you got it. Fund the game by something and else. And you'll sell it to your kids' students? Yeah. I'm trying to make a juggling game and all the social games. Oh, and you're and trying to develop it with developers? Um, I'm actually a developer myself and an oh. artist, kind of in that yeah. sense. Like you can do a crowdfunding also to yeah, develop yeah. it. Mm -hmm. That's so there's a lot of options right now. I'm just trying to have juggling fun in that aspect of my artistry. <laughs> oh, congratulations. I'm glad Thank you. <laughs> there's many venues for you to explore from mm -hmm. developing uh, a game to working for the schools to working as a private instructor mm -hmm. or to perform in birthdays so yeah. there's many venues where you can actually use your skill yeah it's kind of just part of being an entrepreneur you got to use your skills wisely like target your markets and try to see what you can do to kind of yeah. gain money and also just be happy with it as well yeah, yeah. <laughs> I s did you see the piece you did that the studio? Yeah, I, s I watched it. <laughs> it's so fun. It was fun. It was fun to perform with Jen and Beth. Really yeah, fun. yeah. <laughs> Jenny was so grateful that you accepted to perform with her. Mm -hmm. uh, so I enjoyed watching it. It was just cool. Oh, that's good. <laughs> because all the others were so serious. That it was very dancey. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And it was serious too. There was mm -hmm. nothing with fun music everything was like classic yeah very and when, you, when all of stuff. three of you came on the stage you liven up the, <laughs> the whole room and it was yeah fun. we had like the bc boys and other songs yeah and, and the music <laughs> was happy finally i had a smile on my face <laughs> <That's good. laughs> and then it went back to doing slow stuff mm -hmm. and uh so i 
I felt like it was a change of pace when you guys That's came good. on the on the stage. It was I'm a really lot of fun. I'm really glad you enjoyed it. <laughs> yes, I did. I did. The yeah, I, I enjoyed doing it too. It was a lot of fun. Did you put it on your YouTube or your um, channel? I mean, your Facebook? Yeah, I posted it around and That's got pretty good comments from it. <laughs> yeah, so we'll do more because uh, mm -hmm. it's going to happen again, I assume, unless oh, cool. <laughs> she's going to do different styles. Yeah, but yeah. your type of juggling is called what? So I have different forms of juggling. This is ball juggling, which is known as balls and clubs are known yeah. as toss juggling because yeah. you're tossing it in the air and catching it again. Yeah, that's uh, um, that's the classic. This is known as contact juggling because it's in contact with your body at all times, not really oh, being tossed. Oh yeah, yeah, that one is more har is harder, isn't it? Um, you gotta have. It depends. They have their different skill levels. Like I could probably teach you a move, like just putting your hands like this uh, and then doing that. That's already one trick that you can uh, probably pick up if you yeah. want to try. Yeah. Um, yeah. So just so like put your hands around the ball like this on the floor, or on, put it on the table and then put your hands yeah. around. And then? And then open your hands and slide them up, and then close your hands, and then open them again, and then slide it back down, and then close, and then open it again. So that's already one trick. So I, like the skill level with that, like it could be very easy at first. Yeah. And depending like with Paul. And the more you practice, the faster you do it. Yeah. And the goal of that one is like you want to try to um, isolate the ball so it doesn't look like the ball's moving, and then you could like. Ooh, wow! It, it's create a very fun illusion. Yeah. So it's kind of uh, illusion, like kind of like miming with it almost, like yes. you want to mime. And, like, it looks. It looks like yeah. it's uh, in the air, but it, you're actually holding mm -hmm. it. And contact juggling has like. A lot of history. I think it started like with Aztec face juggling. They would balance it on their face. Oh, and, and they do this. Move it around in their heads. Like that it was like some of the early history in it. Okay. Um, you see it in like the labyrinth of David Bowie. He has like the magic bubble crystal ball. Like, yeah. That was one famous um, aspect of contact juggling. Yeah. So it's been around for a long time and there are a lot of different forms. Michael Motion was actually the juggler in David Bowie's. Um, he was a juggler doing David Bowie's hands. Wow. With Michael Motion. That's He's a pretty so awesome. good contact juggler. Yes, so, so so that's where you you watch some videos of him and practice. Yeah, and practice with friends and stuff. Nice. Festivals, you learn a lot. So those are two forms of juggling. This one is known as the diabolo, which is my specialty, which is um, known as, also known as the Chinese yo-yo. Hmm. And um, it's called diabolo. Uh, diabolo, yeah. Yeah. Um, not to be confused with diablo, which is the D devil. D i a b a l o. D yeah, d a a b o l o. Diabolo. Diablo. 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 It's like a Yeah, and it's actually, I forget if it's Greek or Latin. It might be one of the two, but it's basically dia, meaning like diameter, which is like oh. a cross. Okay, and okay. And bolo, which means to throw. So basically it means to throw across, because oh. you're throwing it across on the screen. Okay, okay. So that's kind of what it translates to. Um, it was invented in China okay. about 2,000 years ago, so that's where it originates from. Um, so it's an old art then? A very, very old art form. Originally it was called like different terms in Chinese language, like the Kongju mm -hmm. is one of them, which mean, kind of roughly translates to hollow bell, because it kind of looks like a bell. That's the one you did with the sticks mm -hmm. on the show? Yeah, this is the one I did in the show with the sticks, and I made it like climb up the string and stuff. Yeah, and what um, did you put at the end of the stick? You put the ball at the end of the stick? So you have the um, hand sticks with the string, and then you put the diabolo on the string. And ah. Basically what you do is you got it, get got it spinning. It, and it got it, and it spins. Once it spins faster and faster, it gets more balanced. Wow! So like it uses the force. It like kind of like a bike. When you okay. get when you go faster with the bike, it kind of balances itself. Oh, that's so much fun! And yeah, that was invented in China about two thousand years ago, and wow. kind of uh, spread around the world through like the Western trade and all that. Now it's in the U.S. They used to be made out of plastic. So what you do? Two of them or all three? I could do all three. You can. Yeah. That's awesome. I'll try to demonstrate it later. All right. But um. So this is called the Chinese. Chinese yo-yo. Yo-yo, mm -hmm. and this is called? Um, ball juggling. Ball, and this? Contact juggling. Contact juggling. Yeah, and then these are kind of just variations. Cooking? <laughs> <laughs> Cooking. What is yeah, that? I have an act where I'm a waiter, oh, and I actually use okay. these as, I use this as a diabolo. Oh, okay. I can spin it on the string or That's good, stuff. that's good. And then this is when you want to do a trick, um, this like is a actually, magician um, trick? A spin top. Ah. So you can spin it, and I get it spinning on a string, and I... Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, so this is an art too. I yeah, mean, so these are kind of just more of like, as a professional, I try to be creative you with add, what I offer. You add something to it? Add a unique style to it. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, if you have been a waiter that inspired you, kind of? Kind of. Um, I originally got the idea when I saw 
some of the Chinese girls, I think in a circus, they were using pot lids and stuff. Oh. And I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. I want to try yeah. to have something kind of similar. And I was yeah. like, I don't think I've ever seen somebody use like a wine glass for it before, though, which could be kind of wow. interesting. I saw some. So basically, um, so this is your, um, when you go juggling for mm -hmm. groups or for kids, this is a material you bring with you. Sometimes I, I use some of this. Sometimes I have other things, like I have like Easter eggs, which oh. is kind of more oh, fun yeah, for kids. Oh, yeah, 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 for I Easter. pretend to like juggle eggs. And like ah. these are fully vegan eggs, and they're grass-fed. And I have like jokes and stuff, like where the eggs are just Easter eggs, but like. But they are made of plastic. Yeah. OK. <laughs> and sometimes I juggle real eggs, too, and that kind of gets a good reaction. But I have like a rubber chicken I juggle, too, and other stuff, or juggling knives or torches or. Okay, so you had <laughs> a lot variety. of things, yeah. But Especially this is for what birthday I, for kids, you had a few things. Yeah, but this is more so uh, kind of for more adult audiences. Did you do the balloons a little bit? No, for birthdays? No, Sometimes. not really. No. Balloons is kind of like a different. It's too light. Yeah. It's too light. It'll blow away in the wind. So <laughs> those are the stickers you give to the kids. Yeah, I got stickers printed recently, which is um one is from my website, which is um, thespinforce.com. Okay. And the other is on um, Oh, Okay, okay. So, um, so this one is for a meetup that I'm starting to organize, where you can come to the meetup and learn how to juggle for free. And probably gonna have it like once a month. And, and uh, people practice with you. Yeah. So just to try to give more uh, like outlets to the community and kids and communities to just have something. Yeah. Fun in to case do. you go to a birthday and you want to bring a friend, you can bring mm -hmm. someone. Yeah. And then this is just more of my like website to know more about me. Okay, the spin force is you. Yeah. All right, the other one is also going to be a website? Yeah, this links to basically a page on my website talking oh, it's about a meetup it's, it's a meet a group. It's a sub yeah. page? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so did you get people to join your meetup? So I am actually s like just in the process of organizing it. Okay. Um, I did it like a long time ago like maybe a few years ago, but then I moved recently back to San Jose and I'm trying okay. to establish it over here. To again. get people from that area to practice with you? Yeah, yeah. And I kind of just get new people introduced or sometimes I go to the middle schools, like I said, and the kids, they only have me there for like one day. But wow. um, if they want to learn more, like they can come out and practice more. That's awesome. That is very good. So uh, maybe next year you are you in the calendar? Oh, next year we'll put you in the calendar. <laughs> I gotta email her. I've been so busy to oh. email her my um, okay. pictures. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. No, because the calendar has some jugglers. Mm -hmm. So next year you'll be in it. I hope. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah that would be fun. Yeah, we'll give you a calendar this year. Oh, cool. So, so your name is Chris. Yeah. That's a nice name. And Garcia, I guess you are you from America? Yeah, I am. I was, oh, bo I was born and raised in San Jose. Okay. But, um, my family background is Mexican okay. and um, Native American. Okay, so but uh, you are born in the United States. Yeah. Okay, so so it's not because uh, you were born somewhere else that you became a juggler. You, you learned everything here. Yeah, I learned everything here, like I mentioned in high school. You do see more communities internationally, like Mexico. They have a different kind of community, more kind of like clown-focused and also skill-based with juggling as well. Juggling yeah. over here is more like sport competitive, I guess. Yeah. I also went to the North Beach uh, juggling. Uh, there was at the North Beach Festival, huh. there was uh, the Bella um, uh, performers. Uh, it was Bella oh, yeah, for the jugglers. Circus. Bella. circus. Yeah. And I videotaped oh, cool. <laughs> them. They were so awesome. If you go on my website, you'll find them. Oh, cool. <laughs> so I taped the whole performance, and they had huge success uh, with the kids. Because oh, cool. it's uh, oh. it's uh, North Beach, um, a festival is attended by a lot of children in oh, the okay. area. That sounds fun. So maybe next year we'll uh, you can participate because they have a stage where people perform. Oh, cool. Maybe I'll reach out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, actually, during the summer every week they have a street um, a street fair, oh, and then after the street fairs one at a time, then they have now Sunday Street where there's. Mm -hmm some performers. Oh, cool. So there's a few things. Do they like have a hat on the floor and they like busk? <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> yeah, if you want to perform alone there, that's oh, cool. what you, you'll do for the kids. Because Sunday Street, yeah, a yeah. lot of kids participate. 
Uh, it's called sundaystreet.org or .com, I'm not sure. Oh, cool. I'll have to uh, write that down. So, <laughs> so right now that you consider yourself a professional juggler, mm -hmm. this is going to be your focus, right? I mean, yeah. you're going to make kind of, uh, you're going to be self-employed with it. Yeah, so I'm running it as a, my own business. Like I said, it's kind of like a lot of entrepreneurial stuff where you have to write your business plan and kind of okay. research what markets you want to target and then um, have a marketing plan and a website and all that stuff. Oh, okay, okay. So and you, each time you're going to perform, you're going to be a s subcontractor? Kind of. They hire me out. Like, I usually have a contract or something they can sign, so it's easy for the clients. Okay. And for some events, like I did Great America, where I have to be an employee oh, okay. for them to hire me. So, t so you might get two kind of employment with this gig? Yeah. Oh, okay. Great America still exists? Yeah, California's Great America um, in Santa Clara. Um, okay. They've been having a Halloween haunt series for wow. about 10 years. Actually, this is their 10th anniversary, and oh. I've been doing it for like the past three years. So yeah. like, I go and I do fire and light I juggling. Think, yeah, we went to Great America when my kids were little. <laughs> oh, cool. <laughs> but then uh, now there are other venues for kids like uh, Knott's Berry Farm. Yeah, and they those. have more. There's, there's a lot of organization for children. Mm -hmm. But I don't know how up in the profession you have to be before you're hired with big corporation like Disneyland or yeah. you have um, to, to really... Sometimes it's knowing the right people. Also, sometimes it's having the right materials to okay. market yourself. Yeah. Like if you have a good marketing plan and like these videos where it displays you doing fire and light yeah. struggling and they're looking for that, they're like, oh, this person's pretty awesome. I think they would be perfect for my event. <laughs> oh, yeah. You yeah. got to kind of. I've seen, I've seen the people juggling with the fire uh -huh. thing. The, the torches. Those, oh, the yeah. torches. Yeah. Those faci uh, are something that people get fascina fascinated by yeah, because yeah. they say, oh my God, how <laughs> is he going to. Uh -huh. He's gonna get burned, or he's <laughs> gonna, uh, the fire's gonna burn his tongue. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, but of course you don't get burned, right? Yeah, usually not. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you put the thing in your mouth and the Sometimes torch. Sometimes people um, the put torch. it out like that. Okay. Yeah. So I've seen that at birthdays. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah, that adds a lot of excitement, especially for kids. They like the fire. Yeah, yeah. They <laughs> say, "Oh my God, he's doing something <laughs> interesting." Okay. So you have, uh, when you go perform, mm -hmm. you have uh, a humoristic uh, kind of show? It depends, really. Like for the kids, I have kind of more comedy. And comedy, okay. Comedy acts and stuff. For adults, I could do like more adult comedy. I usually okay. kind of focus more on like what the um, client wants. Like okay. if they want like a circus act, like a choreographed routine for like oh, yeah, music yeah, for on the party, show. Maybe an opening yeah. party. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, okay. Like I did. Um, what should we call it? They Sonic Runaway in San Jose was like a um, piece from Burning Man. They had opening in downtown San Jose. I did yeah. like a fifteen minute piece for that. You did the it one. Was like a choreographed piece. Oh. So it was like where I don't really talk, but I do more like juggling to music. Nice. Yeah. I went to the Burning Man decompression party, and oh, there was cool. the, uh, people were just performing just for fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just it's fun. <laughs> just uh, to be there, but. I, I'm sure, like you said, if it's a corporation, a corporate mm -hmm. party for maybe the holidays, mm -hmm. then you got to do what they want, right? <laughs> yeah, like sometimes they want you to like walk around from table to table and entertain. Oh, sometimes a they bit want, of, oh, okay. Yeah, sometimes they want you to teach workshops or sometimes they want you to like do a stage show or it, it varies. Oh, so you adjust to the, the theme of the party. Yeah. Yeah, Something usually like that. get a cater to what the um, person wants. Like, it's really hard to market yourself as just like, this is specifically exactly what I do for your party. Yeah. Because it's like, you're cutting yourself out from a lot yeah, of markets. Yeah, yeah, you could say, I, I can yeah. adjust to your party. Mm -hmm. Like, if you dress like a pumpkin, like Halloween. Uh, yeah. <laughs> then a and lot you have more Halloween gigs. A lot of Halloween things. gigs. And mm -hmm. if you, you can, you have more than one costume. Yeah, I have other costumes too. Yeah. <laughs> That's like awesome. for, um, for Great America, I have a costume where like, I have lights and a hat that lays up. Oh. And it's kind of more circus-y theme. This is more like a waiter theme costume. Yes. It's a little more like gentleman-y or professional kind of. But like I have other circus-y type themed ones if they want that for the event. Oh, Sometimes wow. I have like big glasses and like a wig for like a clown style. Or wow. That's why you have such a big backpack. You put your stuff <laughs> yeah, in yeah. there. Okay. Carries That's all good. my stuff. Do you... Do you probably also perform for family kids or mm -hmm. 
Just yeah, some of my family members that they want to like learn and stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's good. So, or for your nephews or nieces, mm -hmm. things like that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, right now, you you happy you chose that profession? Yeah, I'm a lot happier I think, than I were to just sitting down making like coding, pro programming for somebody else, staring at a screen all day. <laughs> You you like the contact with the a lot more contact with people with, with the audience. Like you, like I said, you get to see people smile and their faces light up and they learn and yeah it's yeah it's, it's very fun. If the kids are amused, then that's your reward kind of thing mm -hmm. because you have done your job well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you see that you amuse them, uh, do you, do you tell jokes sometime like at uh, Pier Thirty Nine or you don't? I haven't tried Pier 39 yet. Sometimes I do street performing. Like I used to go to Santa Cruz and I would street perform downtown Santa Cruz. And you, sometimes you like I would get people to like come in and they would watch and I would tell them some jokes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so joke about uh, the ball falling or something like that. Yeah. Uh, but you, you develop that with time, I was sure. Yeah, it's a little harder to do just because you're trying to focus on juggling while trying to also entertain the crowd. and. Be kind of pers more personal with like your audience. Yeah, I just passed by um, a comedy school on Mission and uh, between 16 and 17, mm -hmm. and they have classes uh, walk in for fifteen dollars, oh, cool. where people learn how to do stand up comedy. Oh, awesome! <laughs> and this is where you can get ideas for jokes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yes. Good. So I took class before. Uh, but I never did the whole thing. I mean, yeah, I didn't. Do, is hard. <laughs> I didn't do the whole book. I bought the book. It was very oh, okay. expensive, but mm -hmm. I did not uh, really class, go on stage and mm -hmm. be a stand-up comedian. Yeah, it's difficult. <laughs> but now that the school is open uh -huh. and you don't have to pay the whole tuition, then oh, cool. like maybe I'll accessible. just when I have time, I'll just go. Cool. On yeah, Saturday. At 12, they have classes, so I might uh, do well, that's that. That's not too bad, so you're not yeah. working during the day. Yeah, <laughs> they have workshop uh, for $60 or walk in class for 15 It's very affordable. That's not too bad. And uh, it's a three hour class, it's long. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. So, anyway, this is just an idea in case you mm -hmm. want to learn jokes. <laughs> cool. Yeah, I took a stand up class in um, college actually. I went to college at um, UC Santa Cruz and they had a, um, theater a comedy de theater class? department and they had a stand-up comedy class. Okay. And that was fun. I was kind of getting me out of my comfort zone because I'm like, uh, back then I was more of an introvert and kind of like oh. shy and I would like not talk now as much. Now you have much. to you make yeah. us somebody else smile, not just... Yeah, <laughs> it's like instead of juggling silently to music, you actually have to speak and try to hit the punchline at a certain time. And oh, yeah, yeah. It was a challenge back then, but... It's a challenge because each time you perform, mm -hmm. you get 1% better mm -hmm. because then you can see what makes people laugh and what doesn't. Yeah, yeah. So it takes Same goes with one percent upon one percent upon one percent until you know exactly what mm -hmm. makes people laugh. Yeah. And once you get the hang of it, then you get your number. Because you also kind of find yourself too. Like you gotta see, like, oh, I'm more comfortable being this type of person and talking as opposed to like trying to be super cheerful or somebody you're not. If oh, like you're really shy. Yeah, you want to be yourself, also yeah. authentic. Yes. Mm -hmm. So yes, yeah, so. If your style is more to be juggling with lights, then that's what you should stick yeah. to. Yeah, because you don't want to be something you're not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like a lot of really, really good jugglers who could do like seven balls or eight balls, they would never talk. Oh. And some of my friends are that good and they're like, I'm not going to really talk, do jokes. I would rather just juggle to music. Or sometimes yeah. I don't even want to perform. I just practice for myself. <laughs> oh, okay. Because like okay. some people do that too. Or some people only do like three do balls. Do it, you get better. Yeah. So basically, everybody adapt the art to either music or mm -hmm. to comedy or to playing entertaining to see where how people are reacting to yeah. the fun movements that you are making without mm -hmm. talking. You, you can be yeah. funny without talking like a clown, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> like one joke I have for like the torches is like, for the end of my torch act, I blow the torches out and I have two in one hand and then I put it back in the other hand so I have one so I could blow that one out and then it gets lit on fire so I'm yeah. like and, and it's like oh why did I get back get back on fire then I put it back in my other hand and oh it's like, like magic I, so like one keeps on one's blown out and it goes back on fire and then they uh, put it in the other hand and it gets back on fire again oh so yeah it's yeah like you're like pretending to blow it out but at the same time it's getting lit again because you're putting it back on the other so one that's, that's close lit. to magic tricks so kind of more comedy 
yeah. Oh, yeah. There are, there are juggling tricks, though, where they do look like magic, which is kind of cool. Mm -hmm. So, like, with this one especially, like, you can, like... Oh, you can extend the ball. It gives you an illusion. Yeah, or you could, like, stick it to your hand. Yeah. But you really just... <laughs> oh, you're not sticking it. Uh, so like, it looks like it's like stuck to your hand. But oh, from I see. From my perspective, is like I see. From your perspective, yeah. you're holding it. I see. Yeah. Yeah, I was wondering how that could be, <laughs> because in the preview show, Jenny, there mm -hmm. was somebody doing that, and I said, my God, how does the ball stick to the yeah, top of yeah. his hand? <laughs> and that's the way it is, huh? And like the one I was showing, even like it looks like an illusion where you're just keeping it still. Ah, okay. Like, yeah, but like okay. that one works just because you're. Yeah, because you're holding it it's with all the thumb. Yeah. Uh. Like from this way, it looks like it's not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it looks like it's holding the top of your hand, uh -huh. huh? So, so it comes with a lot of uh, tricks that you can learn mm -hmm. from a book or from practice. Yeah, book, practice, festivals, friends. Sometimes people invent tricks. Like I've invented a few tricks myself through my time. Oh. And just like add to the art in itself. Like you want to add the art as an artist, not just by copying everybody, but like creating your own style and making new stuff too, and contributing. But the, the, the game that you want to develop, mm -hmm. people don't need to juggle to, learn, to, to play the game. They just need no. to manipulate the sticks, right? Yeah. And then they become juggler just with a keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> so, Something um, like that. It's kind of just in the like, idea stages, but like, I want to have it so like, they have to do a tutorial. Like, oh. You have to toss one ball back and forth. And then your character levels up so they can learn how to do two balls and then they can learn how to do three balls. So, you like, can actually so you're actually learn? learning how to do it through a tutorial, oh. but also it's virtual, so it's kind of just like a animated video or whatever. Yeah. But if they wanted to have the option to use, like, oh, this actually could work in real life and I could try it out myself. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. So it's not really a game, it's like um, a tutorial. So that's the one part of the game. The part where it's a game is kind of like Dance Dance Revolution, where you're getting all the tricks that you did learn, and then you want to like make Practice a them. routine with it to music, and then you have to press the button at the correct time. With to, the music? Oh, okay. Yeah, kind of like where they have the dance pad, and they're stepping on it, like with dancing. They wow. have those type of games, but more stuff for dancing. And that could be for any age, right? Yeah. It's OK. So because I know that uh, parents buy children all kinds of games at mm -hmm. Christmas. So if you can make it uh, Christmassy, <laughs> it will sell yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Market anyway, it for the holidays. Those are ideas. Those are ideas. Mm -hmm. I know you can have one for all year long and one just for Christmas. <laughs> yeah. Something like that. Okay, so marketing is... Yeah, is part of the game, too, I kind of want it to be like you're trying to be a professional juggler. So yeah. like during the holidays, you have to market yourself for Christmas parties. Yeah. So maybe if you buy like a costume with a Santa hat, and then mm -hmm. they'd be like, oh, you could get a Christmas event. And then it's like, your character got paid this much virtual money for uh, doing the event. <laughs> wow, so awesome. Kind of so fun ideas like that. Yeah, yeah. So, so there's, even though you are a professional, there's still more you can develop. Mm -hmm. uh, as the years go by, you're going to develop another game, yeah, yeah. another show, mm -hmm. another just like we did with Jenny, you developed a, a show, right? Yeah, yeah. So every show is going to be very creative and mm -hmm. it's not just a one-stop shop kind of thing. It's yeah. a, something that's going to evolve with mm -hmm. time. Kind of as the artist evolves, the show and the performance evolves. Like yeah. There's one main show, the one main act that I have that evolved over time. Just really? kind of like with like, I started in high school doing like high school talent shows and stuff and take it like to festivals now and now it's kind of a lot different with the tricks that I do in the choreography. Oh yeah, but yeah. Who did like the choreography at the dance we saw last Saturday? You did the choreography? Um, or we you all both we did, all did it all did but, um, together? It was yeah, a Jen was mostly like the one who organized like the dance part and I okay. did like the juggling part. Oh okay. So, so it, it was a team a team, team effort, effort or? Yeah. Yeah, you did great, by the way. You did Thank awesome. You. <laughs> we, are, we all had so much fun, and then it went back to being serious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I had a lot of fun. Uh, so it was awesome. I think you're a great entertainer. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, so I recommend you to anybody who wants to have a birthday party. They mm -hmm. can. It's the spinforce.com? Yeah, the spinforce.com. Yeah. And I do birthday parties or weddings or any type of private event or yeah yeah event just to get people entertained yeah that's great okay so what we're gonna do is take a pause okay while you warm up 
and then we'll we'll do a number of something you want to improvise or do that you have prepared already okay all right so thank you so much it's been such a pleasure to interview you yeah thank you for <laughs> and, having me uh, <laughs> and uh, let's get ready then to watch you thank you